conservation of momentum. This we're going to get to the first great conservation law of physics. There are three quantities that turn out to be conserved in our universe. One of them is momentum. The other one is energy, which we're going to talk about in the next chapter. And uh, the other one is angular momentum, which we're not going to talk about in regular physics, but we will in AP physics. So if some of you take that, you'll get it. All right. So we're going to, to talk about it, we're going to talk about collisions, something that uh, many of you have experienced out there in the parking lot, I've observed. Two particle collisions, that's two objects smacking into each other. Uh, then we're going to talk about, you know, do some definitions. We're going to talk about what a closed system is and uh, the difference between an internal force and an external force acting on a closed system. And then finally, we'll define what an isolated system is. And using these ideas, we'll finally define conservation or restate actually conservation of momentum. Okay, so let's uh, let's begin. Um, suppose I've got uh, two objects that are going to collide. Now, uh, collisions happen in nature at every scale. Uh, at the tiniest scale, we take atoms uh, or the nucleus of the nuclei of atoms and we smash them together and we watch the collision and all the pieces that fly off. And from that, we discover like the little constituent parts of, of matter. This is what particle physicists do. Then uh, um, you'll have somebody like uh, my uh, buddy Mark Jackson. He used, he's an engineer and he used to uh, go to car crashes. And he used to, uh, I mean, that's a two particle collision when two cars crash. And by looking at how much they were crunched in and how long the skid marks on the road were and all that sort of thing, he would figure out who was driving how fast uh, and, and therefore who was at fault. Insurance companies would pay him to go out and figure out whose fault it was. And that's kind of a collision at every day scale. Some of you play football and you are very well uh, acquainted with collisions. Um, then uh, collisions happen at a, a huge scale. Um, in, I, I think in a, in a few billion years, there's a galaxy that's going to collide with our galaxy. Uh, I think the Andromeda galaxy is on its way here. But it's not anything to worry about. But, uh, when the, but galaxies in, out in space collide. Black holes and stars sometimes collide. Very rare, but it does happen. Well these laws, this conservation of momentum we're going to talk about, apply to all of them. This, this, this idea applies to collisions at all different scales. So let's say I have an object one, and it's moving in this direction. This could be a billiard ball. Or, you know, I, I go to my family reunions and Memorial Day, we play shuffleboard. Have you ever played shuffleboard? Okay. This will help your shuffleboard game and your, your, your billiards game, if you, you'd like to play, play pool. All right, here's object two, okay. Now this has M1 and this is M2, and maybe this object is moving as well. Maybe it's not moving as fast, uh, it has a different mass, but it, now if you take the, these masses and these velocities, this is V1 initial, this is V2 initial, now we're going to use a lot of subscripts here, folks. Okay, because um, we're going we're to have we have multiple objects, and we're going to look at them before a collision and after a collision, and so we have to identify what velocity we're looking at for which object and before or after the collision. So you have to get used to using a lot of subscripts here. Now these two things are going to hit. Now let me zoom all the way out and kind of show you what what I mean by this. These two objects. They're moving towards each other like this, right? And they're going to hit. And when they hit, what do they do? They apply forces to each other, correct? Right? But, and what's true about those forces? Boom, they are opposite in direction and equal in magnitude, right? That's Newton's 
third law, right? For every force on one object, there's an equal and opposite force on another object somewhere. Well, boom, okay? So let's draw a pic, this is before. Okay, now let's um, take a look at the objects um, during a collision. So here's object one. Here's object two. Okay, I'm just showing them squished in to kind of show that they're pushing on each other. Now, watch the subscript here. This is object two, and it's feeling a force due to the collision with object one. This is the force of one on two. So this is uh, the agent. The first subscript is the agent. The second number is the object that's, that's getting a force applied to it. So this is the two, this is the force on object two due to object one. Well, for every force, there's an equal and opposite force. So this would be what? But using the same thing, this is the force of object two on object one. Yes? Does that make sense? This is the force of one on two. Now, these forces, according to Newton, are equal and opposite. So the force of two on one it's going to be equal in magnitude to the force of one on two, but in the opposite direction. And how do we show that there's the, the opposite direction when we're dealing with vectors? Put a negative in front of it, right? So don't get lost in all the nomenclature or all the, the notation here. They apply equal and opposite forces to each other, object one and object two. Okay, now we're going to get to uh, the impulse momentum theorem. Because what's true about the time in which the collision is taking place? Watch this. Here they come. Bam! All right. Now, what did, why, did, why, why am I doing that? Okay, here they come. Bam! Or bam! The amount of time that this force is applied is the same as the amount of time that this force is applied, right? That's common sense, yes? They're applied for the same amount of time. Okay? Well, let's call the, the time that these forces are applied to each other delta T. And it's, you know, this is just the, the amount of time these forces are applied. Well. Uh, the rules of algebra say, hey, uh, if I multiply this side by something, it's still an equality if I multiply this side by the same thing. Let's multiply by the time of the collision, the, the amount of time that these forces are applied. So this is F2 on 1 times delta T is equal to negative F1 on 2 times delta T. Okay. Uh, now, let me ask you this. What is force times a change in time? We have a name for that. Starts with an I. It's an impulse. So, this object, object two, applies an impulse to object one. But, Object one applies an equal and opposite impulse to object two. Because they're same forces, same amount of time, opposite directions. You with me? I guess so. All right. So so this, we, we showed um, on Monday that, that this is just the change in momentum on object one. But this is equal and opposite to the change in momentum on object two. Okay? Well, this 
This is a really profound idea. The change in momentum of object one is equal but in the opposite direction to the change in momentum of object two. So now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to rearrange this little equation here. And we're going to get one of the most important ideas in all of science, in all of physics. The change in momentum of object one plus, just add this to the other side. So look, if I add the momentum, the, the change in momentum together, what do I get? What is this equal to? It's equal to what? It's equal to zero. Okay, so here's the thing. Let's go back to the collision here. Object one gets its momentum changed. Object two gets its momentum changed during this collision. But what's the total change in momentum of the whole thing? Zero. So watch. Wham! Ow! Okay, that was a collision. There was no overall change in momentum. Yes, my left hand had its momentum changed. My right hand had its momentum changed. But when I add those two changes in momentum together, there's no change in momentum. Okay. Um, now, if I draw a picture of this after the collision, okay, let me. Here's object uh, one. Now, object one might still be moving forward. But obviously, if you apply a force to object one this way, the change in velocity will be to the left. So maybe there's object one. And now object two, after this collision, it's had a big force applied to it to this, so maybe it's you know, moving like that or something. OK, Geo, I got a pass for you. So this is the before, this is the during, all of this math, and this is the after. OK, so what happens is two objects come together, they interact with forces, and then they fly apart. That's a collision. OK, in, in uh, definition of a collision in physics, two objects come together, interact, through forces and then come apart. Now, um, I'm going to take, um, I'm going to define a couple of things here. Um, a closed system, let's talk about what a closed system is. And this is in your book, so you know, read, read the book. But in a closed system, we say that the mass doesn't change. So if I have a closed system, um, what I'm doing is I'm looking at a little part of the universe and I'm saying, OK, in this little part of the universe, I'm not going to add or subtract any mass. Now look, look at this collision. I have this object and this object. If I, if I look at these two guys, they are it, you know, before, during, and after the collision. Did I change the mass? No. Okay? I'm not going to change the mass in collision problems. So this is a closed uh, system. Now, there are forces. Now let's talk about uh, internal forces. Now, internal forces are forces that, oh, I'm sorry. Let me know if I'm off camera. OK. Internal forces, these are forces uh, that objects within the system apply to themselves. OK. For example, our solar system. If you said our solar system was a closed system, what kind of forces do the particles in that closed system apply to each other? They apply gravitational forces to each other, right? So um, those forces will be internal to the system. Now, in, in this case, so, um, so these are forces 
that objects in the system apply to each other. Okay. Now, here's a really profound idea about internal forces. They don't change the momentum of your system. Let's take a look at this system again. Two objects collided. They applied forces to each other. So since this is my system, these are internal forces. And notice that, yes, they change the momenta of each other, but for the overall system, the momentum didn't change. And that's true for all internal forces. Internal forces can't change the momentum of the system. They can only change the momentum of the individual objects within the system, but when you add up those changes, you end up with zero. Now, we're just showing this with two particles, but this can be shown to be true for any number of particles. Now, external forces, oh, and so they don't change momentum of the system. So these are these are pretty these are real serious ideas that we're dealing with here. External forces. Now external force, I think this is pretty self explanatory now, right? External forces are forces that are applied to our objects that come from outside of our system. They're uh, something else outside of our system is applying forces to our objects. Now, for example, if I go back to this collision, what if this happens in midair? I say, okay, here's, here are my two objects. And I, maybe there are two balls, and I've thrown them in the air, and they hit each other in midair, and they apply these forces to each other. But what external force is acting on them? Gravity. And gravity is going to change the momentum of these guys. It's going to pull them down. So it's going to give them a downward velocity, and therefore a downward momentum that they did, that it didn't have before. So external forces are forces from outside I'm sorry from outside the system and external forces change or they can change anyway they don't necessarily always have to if they're being canceled out by some other external force then they won't change the momentum. But um, there are forces from outside the system that change the momentum of the system. Now, now that I've, I've defined what a closed system is, it's a, it's a set of objects where I'm not going to change the mass of it, they can apply forces to each other inside the system, but that doesn't change my momentum. If I have external forces, I will uh, change. That finally allows me now to define an isolated system. An isolated, uh, an isolated system. Are you meditating? Oh, I think, never mind. Um, an isolated system is a system that's closed. Okay. In other words, I'm not going to add or subtract mass from it. It's not going to gain particles or lose particles. And also, and this is uh, the, mo the most important idea here, there are no external, no, actually, let me change this a little bit. There are no net external forces. acting on the system. 
So if you can say, hey, I got a series of objects, they're interacting, maybe they're colliding, but uh, there are no external forces acting on them. Nothing from the outside is supplying any forces. I'm going to call that an isolated system. And in fact, really, that's what I have right here. Let, let's say that these are billiard balls on a table. Okay, so here's my table. Now, there are external forces acting on these balls. Gravity is pulling them down, but what's supporting them? There's a normal force, right? So gravity pulls this guy down, but the normal force pushes it up, and so they cancel out. So there is no net outside force acting on the, these two billiard balls. So we can say that these two billiard balls that are colliding are part of an isolated system. Okay, now we get to the last idea, conservation of momentum. Okay, um, I'm going to start with this line right here, and I'm just going to do a bunch of uh, uh, Algebra 1 math. So just follow along, you can copy it if you want. Delta P1, well, what is delta P1? Well, whenever you have a delta, you have a final minus an initial, right? So this is P1 final minus P1 initial. Do you all agree with that? That's delta P1 plus delta P2. Well, that's P2 final minus P2 initial. That's what delta means. And that's going to be equal to zero. Well, this allows me to uh, rearrange this a little bit. I'm going to take these the initial momenta, momentum of object one and the initial momentum of object two and put it on the other side. So P1 final plus P2 final. That is, the final momentum of object one and object two added together is going to be equal to the momentum of object one initial plus object two initial. So this is the momentum of my system after the collision is equal to the momentum of my system before the collision. Now this gets me to one of the most uh, important ideas in physics. This these one this one and this two right here, that represents how much momentum uh, I had after the collision. The total momentum of my system after the collision. So I'm just going to call that P final without the subscript one and two. Just the total momentum of my system after the collision is equal to the total momentum before the collision. Let me zoom in, sorry. For you in the back who can't see it. This is really important. This is a big deal right here. It's saying that, hey, when you have a collision, if it's an isolated system, the momentum doesn't change. It's conserved. If you have an isolated system, momentum is conserved. So I'm just going to restate it here in the corner. Momentum is conserved. Well, what do we mean by conserved? We mean it doesn't change over time. It stays the same. Oh, thank you. Momentum is conserved in an isolated system. Okay? And we're going to be dealing with collision problems where you have an isolated system. We're going to consider the two objects isolated from the rest of the universe. No net force from outside the universe will act on them and we're not going to add or subtract mass. Therefore we start here. Whenever you have a collision problem you start here. And then what we'll do next time is we will work a series of example problems using this. Hey, 
Just a second. I'll let you out. I know what time it is. But read the example problems. They're a little bit different than the way I do it, but read them. And then do the uh, thing. So let me zoom out so you can see the whole thing here. And good luck. <laughs>